share with you today. Praise God that, amen, there is a better way. Jesus is the way. And our, our lesson comes today from Psalms 51. Amen. Psalms 51, book 51. And this is the Psalm of David where he cried out for mercy. Praise God and forgiveness. And this is our prayer today that we will find ourselves in this particular lesson and get right with God. Get it right. Repent and turn back to God. And this is what we're here for because God loves you so much. His love is so amazing. Praise God. It's unfathomable. Praise God. You can't fathom God's love. Praise God. So I want to encourage you today along with Pastor Pacheco. Amen. God is a forgiving God. But all you have to do is just confess your sins. Amen. And repent and turn back to God. This is God showing us, amen, um, in this time that he's given us time to repent and get it together while we still have a chance. Because we don't know what's going to come down for 2021. We don't know what's going to happen. 2020 brought a very unexpected variety of different things in this season. So we as a church, praise God, I'm talking to my church people right now. We as a church have to pull together, come out of the four walls and get into the, come together collectively. I was talking with my mom, we were just talking about that, coming together collectively as a body. We need to pull together. We can't do this separately, but we have to pull together as a body of believers. The Bible said if the, if the, if the, if the body was all singing, then where would the hands be? You know, so we need the eyes, we need the hands, we need the legs, we need the feet. Praise God. I know I'm, I'm not in the subject, I'm not on the topic yet, amen, but I want to just encourage you that we need to come together. I just have to put this out there for us, praise God. The Bible said, praise God, that the wicked shall be led into hell and every nation that forget God. Our nation has forgotten God. And this is why we are going through. But you know what? In the midst of it is still revival. Amen? Amen. Let's go into our lesson. Praise God. We're going to talk more about that because I know Pastor Pacheco. Amen. Praise God. He's a prophet as well. So I'm quite sure the Lord has a word for each and every one of our listeners and viewers on today. All right. Psalms 51. And it says, um, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaken in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward part, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, Blot out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God. He says, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with the, thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. Thou, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my heart shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. 
build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then thou then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thy altar. Praise God. We thank God for the um, message. Praise God uh, that was read in your hearing for our lesson today. Our lesson today, amen, title is Breaking the Crave. All of us have cravings for many different things. Amen. Some internal cravings, some external cravings. Wherever the cravings may come from, praise God, they are cravings. Some crave for chocolate, some crave for ice cream, some crave for other things. But I want to talk about that. I want to talk about that sin craving. Praise God. That craving for sin. That craving for things that is not right, praise God, in the eyesight of God. And i got to let you know, praise God, we've all been there. We've all been guilty of having cravings that's displeasing unto God. So we see here that David used, amen, uh, praise God, amen. David, praise God, used several words to speak of the kindness he desired from God. Here we see that David confessed his sins. Praise God, and forgiveness is requested. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. How do you know we serve a loving God? Pastor Pacheco, tell us about our loving God. Praise God. I was looking at this song. First of all, God bless everybody. Dios lo bendiga. Mi nombre es Pastor Tony Pacheco. Pateneco a la Iglesia Miracle Center International. In Spanish is... Centro de Milagro Internacional. Amen. Estamos aquí en esta tarde meditando la palabra en el Salmo 51. Cuando el salmista David pecó y se apostó o tomó una mujer que no le pertenecía a él, que era Tashima. Dios es tan bueno. God is so good. Dios es tan misericordioso. God is so good. Hallelujah. Yes que siempre crea una manera, un camino para volver a él. He always makes or allows a path to, that we may return back to him. Yes. Con un corazón arrepentido y humillado delante de su presencia. With a, with a forgiveness and a repentant heart that we may turn back to him and come back to him. That's how merciful God is. Yes. God's always willing to, to, um, to, to take us back. I was talking to this young lady and and I'm meditating in this, in this young lady, and I don't want to put her name out, but I'm going to testify. And she was not living right before God. And we had a conversation. She said something. This came from a child that was not serving God. She said, Pastor, in the, the language of the young generation, she said, God is giving us a heads up. Say, he's the man so that they keep that man. And when she told me, I heard in the spirit, where God spoke to me and said, this is the season of change. The yes. season of rebuilding. Yes. Rebuilding relationships. Yes. Rebuilding marriages. Hallelujah. Yes. Rebuilding your ministry. Rebuilding your vision. Hallelujah. God's allowed us to go back to the blueprint. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. I had this vision when I was walking. I was talking about a Sunday. And I need to say this, and in the, in the vision, I was walking on this path, and I was, and I was casting out devils. And, and, and I was focused on, on, on my assignment, just to cast out devils, scorpions, spiders. And suddenly, a, a sandstorm rose up and distracted me. So this, I was distracted, and I was just aiming at the devils, but blinded. I couldn't see, I had to cover my eyes. And that's what many of us have happened during this coronavirus. We have been blinded. We have been sidetracked, and God is calling us back. I said, I'm rebuilding. And after I said, God, why? He said, because I'm confusing the enemy. You see, the enemy knows our program. He knows our in and out. He knows what we do in the morning. He knows when we wake up. He knows our bad habits. He knows our appetites. Yes. He knows our temptation. Hallelujah. Yes. 
monster of a kid. But you know what happened? She repented. She came before God as David did. She cried out to God. And she acknowledged that she had an appetite that was satanic. That was from the devil. And she cried out to God. She said it. She felt this hand from heaven just came down and pulled it out of her heart. Mm. Deliverance comes with repentance in our heart. That's right. That's why David ran to God. He, he runs the book. He had a man of God that did not sugarcoat him. Came to him. Said, David, this is you. And he was convicted by the word of God. People are crying out for a word. They're, they're crying out for change. They, 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 they're dying to rebuild their family, their marriages. Marriages are fighting men and women that got without no jobs. Yes. They're answering that can't pay their bills. And get crying to God. So I need a word. I was talking to um, I was talking to this evangelist and they started doing service at PT. And, and I believe that God, God is using me as a bridge between the Latin community and the English community. Because every time they have a revival outside, they always call me to translate. And I go out and say, yes. You know, I said, I'm here to serve, whatever y'all need. And I've been in that area, I've been blessed. I've been a bridge to bring different nationalities together. Amen. amen. I asked myself, if we can't get along down here, how are we going to get along? Get along up there, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When I go to heaven, I'm going to go to heaven and say, I want to, I want to fellowship with everybody. I want to be able to go to TD Jenny and say, I remember that word that you preached it and, and it blessed me. Hallelujah. I want to go to say, Billy Graham, I remember that revival. Hallelujah. Hey, my son, I want to be able to go and, and salute all the bands and great men of God with our international, from their different nationalities. Hallelujah. I want to be able to rejoice with them. Hallelujah. And have that glorious party up there in heaven when we able to testify to each other, hallelujah, about the greatness and the goodness of God, hallelujah. If we can't do it here, what we can stay, we can do it up there. I told this guy, this friend of mine, I said, I said, if I cut you, he said, Pastor, I said, no, if I cut you, you're going to breathe. Your blood is the same color as my blood. Yes. Hallelujah. You my brother in Christ. Yeah. I don't care what else you to you. I love you. Yeah. If I gotta take my shirt off my back, I'll give it to you. Yeah. If I gotta take my shoes off, I'll give it to you. Yeah. That's the kind of gospel that we need. Hallelujah. Yes. Somebody told me one of the an evangelist. He said, how, how cool are we? God, I need to fast and pray. I said, before you start fasting and praying, you need to imitate Jesus. That's right. Hallelujah. He's the best teacher. Yes. He's the best example that we can use in the ministry of evangelism. Yes. And I tell us, ministry of evangelism is the ministry of love. If you have no love for your brothers and sisters, how can you have love God? You don't love your brothers and sisters, you see them every day. But then you might say you love God? Well, you never see him. And you never see him. Mm -hmm. I was talking to him, we were talking earlier. We were talking about Love, we're talking about our first love. Right when the, like when the book of Revelation, chapter 2, it talks about returning to your first love and you know, to things that you did in the beginning. Amen. I was talking about that when you do ministry, I'm sorry to get out of the topic. I'm sorry, I'm still the topic. That's the Lord use you. That when we do things according to love and we're, and we're, we're, we're a grateful heart, ministry becomes so easy. It's so easy to greet somebody at the door. It's so easy to be an usher. It's so easy to be obedient to the man of God. When you walk in obedience, you walk in love. Hallelujah. It's so easy to clean the church. It's so easy to pick up the phone and call a brother and sister that you haven't seen for so many years or maybe so many months. It's so easy. But then when we haven't been set free from bitterness, hatred, bigotry, jealousy, it becomes a burden to us. This young man told me, I stopped going to church because it became like a job. But I just reserved good news. He said, I got it now. I got it. I didn't get it all that time, but I got it now. And I spoke about the, the, the love of God. You need to ministry, you need to ministry with love and everything. You know, it's a blessing. And he was telling me, I got it, Pastor. I got it. Thank you. Amen. 
So David, so the mercy of God and the, and the love and kindness of God is so awesome. It's like I tell my grandkids, my grandkids, they know they love me. Because every time they get me mad, it takes my 10 minutes after, they go, Grandpa, I love you. <laughs> so every time we mess up, and we go back to God, we're like, God, I love you. <laughs> he opens up his arm to us and yeah. says, come to me. Yeah. God, like the prodigal son, amen, went back home. The father didn't ask him no question. He tell him, what you do, right. how you spend your money, who you lay down with. Right. No, he said, give me your ring, give me your yes. best robe. Yeah. We're doing a feast. My son has come home. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to give God a hand for his I'm sorry. So if somebody listening here today, God is calling you back home. God is calling you back home. Hallelujah. God said your time is not up. Hallelujah. I was talking to this young man the other day, an ex-warlock. And he, he was talking to me. This is a guy with high rank. And now he's, he's, he's practicing the, he's in the Masonic, the Jewish Masonic. That's also called it night. That's, that's his thing. And he came to me, he said, he said he was ministering to some lady, to some lady who was ministering to her. He said, Pastor, something happened to me. I said, what happened? When I ministered to her and I started praying with her, praying for her, I started praying like you do. I said, what do you do? He said, I call on Jesus. And when I call on Jesus, something just came over me. Wow. He said, I had to stop. The lady got paranoid and said, stop. I said, no, I can't stop. This is God. He said, all he could do before he continued to minister was just bow down and recognize that, that the Holy Spirit just came over him. He said, he was shaking. He was crying the presence of God. He said, I felt that again when you always talk. When you told me you just call on the name of Jesus, hallelujah, I told him, I said, look, Jesus knows English, he knows Chinese, he knows Russian, I don't care what name, how you mention his name, what language, he's going to rescue you, hallelujah. Yes. He said that the Holy Spirit kept upon him. And he said, I started worshiping God in, my, in, in Jewish, in the language. And he started just worshiping God and continued to minister to the young lady and everything. He kept, he came home and just testified to me. I was so happy. I was rejoicing. Yes. God is doing something. Yes, he is. There's a revival going on. I, I tell people, whenever there's repentance, there's revival. Yes. Okay. It's not all the jumping around. It's not all the concerts. It's not all the ordinations. Uh, it's the repentance. How do you, I told somebody, he said, oh, uh, what is repentance in the heart? I said, that's true. But repentance starts from your home. Right. From your house. Right. Start with your family. Right. Start in your house. Start praying to God. Lord. Stop compromising. Hallelujah. People come to my house. I'm sorry. For, I need, well, I'm not going to apologize no more. Don't apologize. People come to my house and they get mad at me. <laughs> That's you turn that music off. Or put your headphones on. I don't really, we don't listen to that kind of music. My right. young girls, they, they're teenagers, so they kind of they kind of angry. You know, they want to they wanna fit in in the world. But God is doing something. Yes. I walk into the room to inspect the room, make sure the rooms are clean. And when I walk inside the room, they got their Bibles open. And the small one tells me, the little one, she has the biggest mouth. She has the biggest attitude. <laughs> but she tells me, I read my Bible every night and I'm praying. She said, I, I go into the Facebook and it's, and I look at the young people, and whatever they're saying, what they're praying, I mean, people are saying, and, I, and I'm praying. And she told me, something happened. I said, what happened? And the other day, my boyfriend was praying with me. And when he was praying, he started speaking them tongues that he was speaking, and it reminded me of you, and my hair stood up and everything. Wow. <laughs> she said, you sound like my stepdad. <laughs> How you? So God is doing something. Yes, he is. We just need to be patient. I told somebody, patient is a virtue, it's power. Yes, it is. Yeah. You know, you need to be powerful to be patient. You need to be powerful to wait on God, right? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to continue talking because I'll continue talking. Amen. Amen. But it's not you. that's the love and kindness of God. It's not you, it's the Amen. Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Spirit. I told you he was a prophet, 
And one thing about prophets, they are all, a, a true prophet is always on standby. God, they, they are always prepared for a download. They don't have to go in the shut in. They don't have to, they, I mean, that's part of their consecration. Yeah. But when God wants to speak hot off the press, he uses his prophet. And this is what we're saying today. God is calling the home to get back in order. God is calling the church to get back in order. God is calling the government to get back in order. You know why? Because during this pandemic, all of us that have been unscathed and untouched have experienced the loving kindness hey, and the Lord, mercy of God. It is because of the mercy of God. And the young man that was a warlock, I know who he's talking about because I met him. Praise God. And he, yes, he was he was a high-ranking warlock. But he turned his life over, praise God. And he's experienced the power of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ upon his life. That's better than Satanism, praise God. Somebody watching today might be bound by something, Ooh. amen, like Satanism, amen, or the occult, praise God. Or you might be bound, praise God, by anything, addiction, praise Ooh. God. You might be going through in your home with your uh, significant other. But like Pastor Pacheco said, praise God, we have to go back to our first love. If we don't go back to our first love, if we don't repent, this land is not going to heal. Hey. This land has a hole in its soul. Praise God. And this is why we're here to uh, talk about repentance today. To talk about we can, we can, we can give burnt offerings. Praise God. We can give sacrifices. We can sing on a choir, we can play instruments, we can even get consecrated bishop. But if our life is not clean, God is not receiving food oh, on a dirty plate. And anybody going to give me something, I want them to have a clean plate with some good food. And a lot of pastors are serving meals on dirty plates. And God is calling us to give back, amen, between the porch and the altar. Praise God, grab to the horns of the altar so we can give the people some fresh manner. We don't have nothing to say. A lot of the, the world is in need of the church. The government has failed us. The system has failed us. Amen. And as Pastor Pacheco was saying, praise God, we as a church have to repent and get back, praise God, in the face of God. Praise God. Like David said, have mercy upon me, O God. Amen. According to your loving kindness, according to the multitude, Ooh, yes. multitude of your tender mercies. And he says, blot out of all of my transgressions. Cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy, O God. Amen. The title of this psalm gives the tragic context for David's plea. He had sin and murder and adultery. Those were the first Ooh. two sins. Then his third sin, he tried to cover up. Amen. And his heart is against repentance. He tried to cover it up and harden his heart against repentance. Yes, like Pastor yes, Jacob yes. said, until the prophet Nathan had to come to his house and let him know, David, you are just like that countryman, that rich countryman that took that poor countryman's kid. And, 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 and fixed it up, amen, and dressed it up and gave it to his um, his travelers that came to his house, amen. And that rich man took that poor man's kid, the poor farmer's kid, and when David heard of that amen story, he got indignant, amen. And he said, who is this man? I suffer not this man to live. Praise God, the prophet Nathan said, you are the man. I want to tell you today, you might not like it, Pastor Chuck, but you ready? I'm going to say it. Say it, say it, say it. You are the man. You are that woman. You try to cut all my shit. You try to cut all my shit. You try to cover your sin. Praise God. The Bible said in Proverbs, Amen. I believe it's the 18th chapter or the 13th chapter. He who cover his sins shall not prosper. But he who confess his sins, the Lord will come in and have mercy. Praise God. Amen. It took a bold confrontation of Nathan the prophet to shake him. And that's found in 2 Samuel chapter 12. 
Yet once shaken, David came in great honesty and brokenness before God. Let me tell you all something. Pull your own courage before God has to pull it for you. Hey! Pull your own covers. Expose your sins before God. You don't have to do it in front of man, but do it before God. Now the pastors need to repent to the church. Amen. That's one thing. The pastors, yes, talk about the it. teacher, yes. the evangelist, the prophet, and the apostle, and the administration office, the bishop. We are including me. I have to repent to my congregation. Glory to God. Amen. We have to repent. And I, and I tell you, amen, I, 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 I've been making a bold confession, praise God, to the church about how we need to get back on the prayer line. Praise God. Our prayer line. Amen. Get back on the prayer line. We had a seven, six days a week prayer line, three times a day. People got tired of doing that. And you at home, you at home, you have a luxury to be at home and pray. Praise God. There is a great falling away that Paul speaks about. Praise God. We are in that great falling away. And that's because we're not in our place. If David was in his place, instead of being at home and getting up from a nap, praise God, getting up from a nap, Praise God. Now, David had any, every, any and every woman that he wanted at his disposal. You know? But he saw Uriah's wife. And that's just like the crave. The crave don't, you know, the crave, the crave ain't gonna, um, the crave ain't gonna tell you, you know, wait on the Lord. He has sent you a, a, a nice companion. He'll give you the job that you need. He'll bless you with the, uh, the location for your house or apartment or transportation. You know, you know, we don't want to wait. Praise mm -hmm. God. Amen. Amen. The crave would tell you, you know, don't wait. Go for it. And that's what the crave told David. David knew what he was doing because David was a worshiper, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, he was. You know, and when you have a, when you, when you are a worshiper, Praise God. When you are a warrior worshiper, amen, David was a warrior king worshiper, and he knew about the presence of God. Even when he was king, praise God, when it was moving the ark, amen, from Obed-Edom's house, praise God, to the temple, praise God, David would take a few steps behind the ark, and he would dance. He'd take a few steps in front of the ark, and he would dance. He got so he got so caught up to where he took off his kingly garments. Praise God! And he danced in the presence of God. So David knew better. David knew what it was like to be in the very presence of God. But yet his flesh made him crave another man's wife, and he knew who she was. Because the servant told him, the servant said, is this not the wife of Uriah? And David knew, but David called into him. We are going to be held accountable for what we know and do presumptuously. Praise God. That's why David said, behold, I was born in sin and shaken in iniquity that my mother conceived me. He used that. He admitted that he was sinful, that he was fallible. And that's where we have to come to a place and point in our lives and in our relationship with God to let God know we messed up. Mm -hmm. Praise God. We have to let God know I messed up. Praise God. I messed up and I need to break the crave. Praise God. Amen. He said, have mercy upon me, O God. This is the prayer of a man who knows he has sinned and has stopped all self-justification. David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. A good and direct confession without excuse and with clarity. This was no uh, selfish or trying to justify himself confession. He couldn't say, yeah, but Amen. this. Yeah, but that. Mm -hmm. Some of us give God half-hearted confessions. Oh, God wants it all. He wants all or nothing. 
Praise God. And God is saying we cannot give him a half heart of confession. Lord, you can forgive me for this, but I still got to know. Give it all to him. Give it all. Yes. Go ahead. Give it all. Give it all. Give it all. Hallelujah. I was talking to somebody and, and I told him, I said, I repent. He said, Pastor, you repent? I said, every night when I go home, I repent. I go before God, I repent. I repent for speaking to my wife the wrong way. I repent for getting angry. I repent for doubting. I repent for being disobedient. And I was explaining to I was talking to him. It's like the pastor was saying, the bishop was saying here, Sometimes we go to God and we repent and we give him half. Yeah. I got to control myself and I feel the Holy Ghost. That's all right. Go ahead. Let the Lord lead. Go ahead. I have this um, I do a lot of deliverance. And I was explaining to somebody, I said, I, I built a house. I said, the house has many rooms. You got the husband room, you got the kids room, you got the kitchen, you got the basement, and you got the attic. In the attic, you put the stuff away that you them things, them hidden, them hidden things, you put them away. Like an old picture that you want, when nobody's home, you go look at it again, right? Old boyfriends, you know, old flames, old habits. You live in the basement. Um, you kiss them, you put the, the, you kiss them, you put them in the basement, right? Amen. So when we come before God, we need to get delivered from our childhood, that's a kiss one. We need to get delivered from the stuff in our basement, the stuff in our eyes. So we need to give God all the areas of our life. And when we start going to every, every room in our life, our bedroom, our child room, our little room, our basement, our attic, God is able to set us free from every generation curse yes. that was ever placed upon you. Yes. Or whatever I call them, hitchhiking spirit, or the hitchhiking all the way to your age of 18 or 21 or 45. Mm -hmm. So when we go to God, we have to give it all. I say, God, come into my heart. Search me, Father God, Lord. Yeah. Yes. Go to every area of my life. God, I give it all to you, God. I give you my, my childhood, Lord. I give you every pain, every rebellion that I have in my heart, Father God. There's something about, I was talking to somebody, if you repent from your sin, I will cast that devil out. That's right. Without, without no repentance, there's no deliverance. That's right. Without no repentance, that you can't restore your marriage. Without repentance, you cannot overcome your appetite of addiction or mm. alcohol or gossiping mm. or sex or sex or lying. I was ministering to this um, young lady. And this happened years ago, so I could talk about it. And she was unfaithful to her husband. And she says, have deliverance. So I, I gave her a paper, I told her, yes, right now. You know, I gave her a form to fill out. And I told her, wear loose clothes, loose shirt. And she came. And I remember the guy that was the, the person that was helping me deliver. And as a deliverance, you know, couldn't deliver her. And when he was ministering to her, she started to levelate in the air. So when she went up in the air, and this, I'm talking about a big woman, she went up in the air and she floated. And then I jumped in it and I bound the demon. I reminded her that I had authority over all his power. And he came down. And then I remembered, John, I said, wait a minute, we can't do this without repentance. I reminded the young man that was helping me. I talked to the lady, I brought her back. Mm -hmm. I said, you need to write everything on this form. She wrote everything down. I only I read it. I pray over it until she repented. She confessed everything to me. Then we pray over her and God set her free. Praise God. And now she has a help. She has a blessed marriage. Amen. When I, when mm -hmm. I see her, she's trapped. She even going to Puerto Rico, going to Walt Disney. You know, they're together. Praise God, restore the whole man, restore her relationship with her husband, restore the relationship with her husband, with her kids, and everything. So that's what happened when repentance comes. Right. And that's only to do like David. David, David knew what he was doing. Right. Amen. He, was a, he was a man in God's heart. He knew God's heart. Yes. Amen. And he was wise enough to repent. Amen. Yes. yes. Um, I need to say this before. I had 
Highest Division, and I'm going to talk to every nationality that's listening to me right now. And I shared this with the, the church a long time ago. I was in a revival. It was a real big man. It was, it was a tight revival. Many people were there. Many different nationalities. And I remember in the, in the vision, I was, my word was, God, how are they going to understand each other? And so I was ministering the word, even though some people did not understand what the minister was preaching. Mm. When the Holy Spirit fell, fell, every person in that revival understood each other. And they were able to interpret their, each other's tongue. Wow. And God's come, God, so God showed me a glimpse of the last, what's going to happen in the last days. God has given us a chance to come together. And I remember the young lady told me, God is giving us a heads up. Yeah, God is giving us a heads up. We need to get together. God said we need to start rebuilding. We had the blueprint all wrong. I guess we're reading the upside down, right? Amen. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm fine. Hallelujah. I told, I told somebody, we even need to love our enemies. That's right. And bless yes. those that curse us. That's right. Yes. Amen. God Amen. bless everybody. Amen. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a blessing. I know I just want to thank, thank everybody for just having confidence and allow me to be here and, Amen. and share with you. Amen. 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 And I bless the ministry, the TV ministry too. Amen. Amen. Pastor Linda Jackson. Yes, the Pastor Barry Linda. Amen. They're going worldwide. They're going to have yes. their own satellite soon. Amen. 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 So continue praying for them. Amen. Yeah, continue to lift them up in prayer. We met a vow before God that has, every time God gives us an opportunity to speak the word, we're going to speak the truth. Amen. 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 We're going to speak the truth and we're not going to say sorry for it. No. Amen. And if you want to see, amen, more programs, praise yes. God, tell, tell somebody about Victory, amen, productions, TV, yes. amen, broadcasting, praise God, through internet, praise God, amen. Please feel free to share it, amen. There are many, many great people on there. There are shows, praise God, gospel videos, amen, um, hosted shows yes. by various people in the um. Um, community and within this uh, metropolitan area. So, praise God. We're just here because we love you. Yes. Praise God. Pastor Chuck was here because he loved you. Amen. <laughs> I'm here because I love you. Praise God. And we want to spread that love. You know, it doesn't take a lot. It's, it's, it's like, it doesn't take a lot to say I'm sorry. No. God, I'm That's sorry. God. That's all you have to say. God, I'm sorry. sorry. Exactly. You know, David only confessed when he got caught. <laughs> you don't want to get caught. Like I said, pull your own cover. Tell yourself. Listen, yes. I'm an addictions counselor, and I'm in groups at um, the facility where I work at. And every group, you know, there's always sharing. And in my particular group, a man, um, sometimes I deal with the men, sometimes I deal with the woman. It's a co-ed facility. So, um, in one of my groups, we were talking about um, letting go, you know, letting go and um, being honest in your recovery with your addiction, you know. And one of the gentlemen said, uh, there was a question, how do we maintain our recovery? How do we maintain our sobriety, you know, especially when we relapse? And we was talking about relapse prevention. And he said, the best way to keep from relapsing is to tell on yourself. Tell somebody. You know, and that's the thing, um, mom and pop. People are afraid to confess their sins. The Bible says confess your sins with one, one another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. Amen. There's a so, reason. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a reason. It's a trust. I was great to say that. Trust. Trust. People have been burnt by the church. People have been burnt. And now people are not praying. You know, so you can't tell your confession to everybody because they're not praying. You know, so you got to confess and talk to someone that you know is walking with the Lord. I'm going to tell you like they tell us in addition. You want to talk to somebody that's got some good clean time. 
Amen. <laughs> you, are, you are talking, and what I mean by that, I'm not talking about only from addiction, but I'm talking about clean time with God. Mm. Clean time with God. That's not a that's not a habitual, amen, or a presumptuous sinner. Mm. Praise God. Or mm. that's that has one foot in the church and one foot out of the church. Talk to your pastor. Talk to the mothers of the church. Talk to Amen. The mothers, we we the mothers are almost Amen. Um absolute in the church now. Praise God. And we have to pray. Mothers, if you're watching this, praise God, stay on your post, stay on the wall, stay on your knees. Amen. Elders, praise God, that are watching this, ministers that are aspiring ministers, amen, have time for the people. That's one thing my pastor told me. She said, you will always be successful because I watch how you take time when you pray with the people. Always take time with the people because we have a lot of people that are bound by sin, bound by all type of habits, addictions, and you know, even into the psychosocial um, aspect. So we need, just like Pastor Chuckle said, he couldn't do no deliverance, not unless that woman repented and got it clean. Because that's that one demon that's not going to come out, you know? That's mm -hmm. that one demon that's not going to come out, that demon that you're holding on to. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. But in my closing, praise God, in our closing, Pastor Jeff is going to pray, amen, and um, whatever the Lord needs him to do, praise God. Um, in my closing, I just want to say break the crave. Mm -hmm. Get it right before God. Get it right before your maker. Get it right. Mm -hmm. it, it, while we still have time. Because tomorrow is not promised. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. You know, you never know what the next day is going to bring. You know, break that crave. It, it can be done. Deliverance is obtainable. You don't need nobody to lay hands on you. You don't need nobody to uh, baptize you in vinegar and oil. Praise God, oil and vinegar or whatever. All you have to do is get on your knees. Amen. Yes. And your self-deliverance. For those that are Christians, amen, there is only one feeling of the Holy Ghost, but many refillings. Mm -hmm. So for those that are Christians, you can do a self-deliverance. Amen. amen. Clean amen. yourself out. Remember we used to floss at the mouth and purge? I don't know if y'all remember that. Mm -hmm. But we used to purge. It happened in here a couple of weeks ago. The anointing came down, and one of the sisters, praise God, got purged her and cleaned her up right back here. Amen. Right there, on the, right here, between this area. Amen. So we keep paper towels over here, praise God, because it happened. Amen. Pastor Pacheco, if you want somebody to heal on my Torah, say, if you need somebody to pray for you personally, praise God. If you need somebody to pray for you personally, praise God, call this number. Praise God. Pastor Chuck, could I give him your number? Oh, yes, yes. Amen. You, you can give it to him. Um, call 475-210-8506. Amen. Do it again. 475-210-8506. In Spanish, it's 475-210-8506. Pastor Pacheco. Pastor Pacheco. Would you go ahead and lead us out and pray a sinner's prayer and pray a prayer? for the um, um, audience, the um, UN audience, and give us the last word. You watching this morning, I know you're watching, amen. This, um, this morning I woke up and I went to the backyard and I noticed that the weeds and the grass, they, they grew. And God told me, whenever there's a rainstorm, there's growth. God's telling me to tell you today, in the midst of your storm, there's going to be growth. Yes. At this moment, I come against every spirit, every curse of the locust, the cocker worm right now. If you're listening right now, right now, I'm going to do something right now. God is popping into my mind right now, into my spirit. We're going to do deliverance right now, deliverance. I want you to confess whatever sin that you're struggling right now, whatever that appetite, that sin that you cannot let go. I want you to just confess it before God right now. 
And we're going to pray for you. We're going to declare deliverance over your life yes. at this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Father God, right now, come get the spirit of rebellion. Yes, Lord. We break his hold. We, we expose his strategy. In the name of Jesus. We expose his assignment. Right now, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. God, I come against Ima put it again now. Every wish crime. I come against every unknown curse. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father God. We break every contract of Satan and his demons right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. We break, we cancel the blood contract right now also. In the name of Jesus Christ. We cancel right now the spirit of addiction over the family, the young people. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. I come against the spirit of suicide right now. God said you will not die, but you shall live. In the name of Jesus Christ. God said you will live to see another day. Yes.